Hey everyone, History Mystery Man here coming to you today from North Olmsted, Ohio, and so excited to bring you my annual Edmund Fitzgerald video tributes this year honoring Bruce Hudson, who was just 22, one of the youngest crew members to go down on the Edmund Fitzgerald. And he lived here with his mother, Ruth Hudson, and father. He grew up here, uh, very near the high school here, North Olmsted High School. Uh, but my video begins today with a 1974 Dodge Challenger. Bruce Hudson purchased that 1974 Dodge Challenger from a local Dodge dealer here, right down the street here in North Olmsted. And he had it just a year, put about 8,000 miles on it. Um, and he was on that fateful trip. The Fitzgerald sinking November 10th, 1975. His car was all packed up and ready to go to California when they got off the ship. Can you imagine how excited he was? 22 years old, worked on the Edmund Fitzgerald, the pride of the American side, uh, had money in his pocket. The Merchant Marines made good money. And, you know, holidays coming up. He was off to California, but obviously he didn't get that opportunity. But I've been looking for that Dodge Challenger for years and I finally found it. I'm so excited. In fact, we're going to take a ride in it and you're invited uh, to come along. And of course, the Dodge Challenger is a great story, but the one that trumps all is what happened here when shortly after Bruce died, there was a knock at the front door. Ruth Hudson answered that door and what she found, found out will blow your mind. You know, right before Bruce died, he had a conversation with his mom and it, the conversation drifted toward a motorcycle riding. She did not like him riding his motorcycle. He had a Kawasaki as well. And Bruce Hudson guaranteed, uh, guaranteed his mom that in no way would he ever die on that motorcycle. He would die in a way that the whole world would know about. That was a quote from her. You're saying that's the only thing that made it off the Fitzgerald? I believe, the, I believe it. One of the very few things. I believe it because on, Octo on October 31st, it says it right in the book, they were in Ashtabula unloading, okay? They were unloading the ship. And Bruce took his car, brought it to Toledo. So when they came back on November 10th, he could get in the car and him and his other shipmate, Dave Weiss, were going to go to Angora Park, California. He lived out there. They were taking the car to California. So they took the Challenger over to the Toledo dock, the suitcases in it, and left it there. When they left it there, Bruce left something in there. And it's his decade lighter. Wow. This is his lighter he had on the Edmund Fitzgerald. Not this box, that's to preserve it. This is what was in the car. He left it in the car. This he, is his Zippo lighter. This is this Columbia Transit wow. logo. The last time it was smoked was probably on the Edmund Fitzgerald. And those guys were always constantly painting the Fitzgerald. There's paint from the Evan Fitzgerald. There's red oxide primer right there. And I showed this to his mom, and she says, that is his lighter. When you bought the car, that lighter was in there? Well, the guy that had the car before me, I asked him, was there anything in the car? And he goes, just this. And he dumped out a paper bag and just flew right across the workbench. And I knew what it was because I saw the... That is so I cool. I saw the insignia. There you go. Just don't drop it. No, I won't do that. Don, in this the is where, car. This is where it comes full circle. That when I was a kid, when I was on our family boat, and we were going right by the Fitz, the big ships in the Fitzgerald, those propellers being out of the water when they were loaded, scared the living daylights out of me. And I had nightmares about that Columbia Transit butterscotch colored sea on that smokestack. I used to have nightmares of being sucked up in that propeller. So when I saw that insignia, I, I knew what it was. I knew exactly what that was. But it was amazing when I showed his mom, she just was, she really couldn't believe it. And so just kind of by divine intervention that I was able to meet her and be able to reconnect her with the car and the That's lighter so cool. and the whole thing. The legend of the Edmund Fitzgerald continues. This is fascinating. You know, you knew it was out there, but where do you, where is it? How did you first hear about it? Uh, I don't. I've been following the Edmund Fitzgerald for decades. So, but did you, when you, you didn't read the book, though, that's weird. I didn't read the book. The I don't know. Deal. People know. People talk. And I have heard about this car. Boy, is that beautiful! Is that the original paint on the car? Well, there's another story about the original paint. Uh, Bruce had a little accident with it, so it's mostly original. 
It had a little damage on the right rear quarter. Well, it shows 53,000 miles. I put 20,000 on Did you myself. put the Columbia logo in? You know what I did? Yeah, I, don't I, I, don't, I don't blame you. I made that on there because that's what a deckhand would have on his car. Of course. Why not? So this is the Dodge Challenger. 74. 74 Dodge Challenger owned by Bruce Hudson. He bought it in 74, bought it new. November 10th, 1975. Ooh, I like the way that door sounded when it opened. That crusty, wow. Oh, original interior. Bruce put that Dodge logo on, that's just a magnet. Can I sit in it? Sure, go ahead. I'm sitting in the Dodge Challenger owned by Bruce Hudson crew member on the Edmund Fitzgerald. He was just 22. Look at these gauges. And it's only got, is it, so you got 55,000 miles on it when now? When I got the car, it had 31,000 on it. And I put the rest of the mileage on. I've, I've driven the car to the Mopar Nationals in Detroit. I've driven the car up to Mackinac Bridge and all over. This is so you cool. You can't leave cars sit. You gotta drive them. <sighs> hmm. That's Bruce's keychain? Yeah, but this, I added that. Okay, the yeah. leather piece is, was yeah. his? Yeah. Wow, that is so interesting. I'll blow your mind away. When I knew Ruth, she goes, you know what? I have the license plates that were on that car and Bruce had it. There they are. Wow, those you got those, it all. Those were on there when the ship went down. Bruce put that sticker on, really started putting stickers on cars. 1975. What does this car mean to you? <laughs> I mean, I'm. you know what? pleases me most Priceless. that's in your hands someone who really cares about it and understands how important this machine is was that bruce's hat no but, but that's I'm, an original that's Columbia. an original deckhand hat you'd have to be you'd have to be connected with the columbia transit lines and be a, an employee of columbia transit to get this that is beautiful Three forty Magnum, and that's the original motor. It's the original motor. That's the original. Wow. This this car's. This is all original. Pretty much all. Wow, well, it's a low mile car. Where are you gonna find one of them at? <laughs> You're not. Not one owned I by mean, Bruce Hudson. What? Uh, basically, a one owner car. And he was the only child, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Have the original radio. Uh, so this whole story is blowing my mind. I got to tell you. Yeah. So I dug your name off the internet. So I don't know even how I found you, but an odd address popped up, and I said I'm going to go see if I can track this guy down. Went and pounded on your brother's door who connected me to you. I mean, and here we are riding in Bruce Hudson's 1974 Dodge Challenger. This is, um, this is a huge moment for me. Well, not too many people really appreciate what this car means. Uh, you know I do. And, uh, if, and if, I know you do. Oh, this is, this means more to me than any vehicle I could ever have. I mean, I've always wanted a Chrysler car. And seeing the Edmund Fitzgerald when I was a young lad, only 10 years old was definitely uh was in my soul and i think it was divine intervention that bruce i think has trusted me through his mom to put this car with somebody that really that really cares about it. for it and, and we'll protect it and didn't you kind of say when you came into this 74 dodge challenger that your life changed yeah i a few, mean a few things really what changed well i'm a young guy single all my life never been married no kids and it just kind of focused myself a little bit closer to a goal in life and I think when I got this car a lot of good things happened I found my wife that I, I have known for years and never thought we'd ever get married yeah you guys like met when you were little kids or something or uh, 21 and, or something when I was in uh, just out of high school um, had a motorcycle shop and I used to ride this girl on the back of my motorcycle and <laughs> really hit it off good for a little summer 
love and then you always want the one that got away back i'll well, see you in september but that didn't come huh well what well, came how many years later 37 wow 37 years so later. so you reconnected with your who would become your wife when you purchased just after purchasing this car yeah just by by chance we crossed paths and uh it just worked out uh, that's so cool really good and other things happen um i was blessed with being able to buy a property and a lot of things just sometimes you wait for things to come together in life and when this car came into my life a lot of things came together as well dude you are riding with bruce hudson you know well, I, sometimes, it, I sometimes mean sometimes i feel that Think about all the great things that's happened to you since you came into possession of his car. Well, I've got some old cars. I hope this when I leave this earth someday, somebody will really appreciate them. And I think maybe he wanted this car to go to somebody that knew his story and, and got to meet his mom. Thank God I got to meet his mom. Her, his mom, Ruth, his who, mom, who you knew very well. His mom, yeah, his mom, Ruth. I got to meet her through the car. What was she like? Oh, she was an incredible woman. Uh, she was... I think she, I, I look at her as almost a hero in the way that she helped protect the families, uh, go through some of the experiences they had to go through. How it, heartbreaking for her. It was to lose an only child, and she just lost her husband not long before that. Uh, it was a big thing for her, and when this car came back into her life, when I got to meet her, it had been years and years later, I think she uh, opened me into her home, and uh, we got to talking about Bruce, and I met Bruce through her. Because I never met Bruce Hudson, but she introduced me to his high school buddies. Oh, that had to be fun. And that was even a neater thing because they never got a chance to really have some closure. And I think we we met with the car at a municipal park at a, at a car show. And when they came, I think it was a closure for. She had people from uh, the neighbors, the family. It was a closure for his buddies to kind of say it, Bruce was saying it was okay that we all got together and it, it made it really special for me it was almost a, an, apo an apostrophe to the end of the story but as you know with the Edmund Fitzgerald the, le the legend lives on and there's a lot more to this story and it goes on and on and on because Bruce has grandchildren really he does he is so girlfriend he, was pregnant did he ever meet did he have a son or a daughter a daughter did he so he never met his daughter no wow his girlfriend was pregnant with his child when the ship went down yep wow and she's got four children and they live not too far from here have you ever met bruce's daughter no uh we should go meet her well maybe the maybe someday she'll seek me out and okay. i'd love to meet her i really would i sure would but have you met his grandchildren? Nope. He have not. Okay, I, but I know I know their names. That's about as far as I want to press. But I know he does have a legend that lives on through his daughter and his grandchildren. And someday maybe they'll seek me out and get to ride in grandpa's car. That would really be wonderful. It was really special to his mom that those grandchildren uh, live on in his memory. And I, I think she was able to spend time with them. So I'm just leaving the home of Bruce Hudson, said a little prayer there, and I'm walking toward the high school. So taking the path Bruce Hudson took every day, hanging right right here, and bring you right into the back end of the school. This would have been his route to high school. These things are spiritual for me. Home of the Eagles. And this is what I mean about coming up through the back way at North Olmsted High School. The new North Olmsted High School, that's where the old high school once stood that Bruce Hudson attended. Of course, uh, this building is new in, in the last couple few years, whatever it's been but this is where the old high school stood. I wonder if there's like a little plaque or memorial inside the high school that says Bruce Hudson was here. So I'm at the local library here in North Olmsted going through the 1972 yearbook, North Olmsted High School yearbook. He, Bruce graduated in 72 and I did see his name, B. Hudson in the marching band second row fourth from right 
I also found Bruce in the 1971 yearbook. And as a junior, he played in the marching band as well. I don't know what he played, but he played. He's fourth or third from the left there in that fourth row. Bruce Hudson's neighborhood here in North Olmsted, Ohio. This is where he went trick-or-treating on Halloween. Door to door. Rest in peace. I just parked at the local Dodge dealer where he bought the 74 Dodge Challenger 1111 on the clock. That's a sign of the angels. North Olmsted Dodge. The building's brand new, but this is the site of the old building. And it's interesting because the first car I see in here is a brand new 2022 Dodge Challenger on the showroom floor. Similar characteristics of the one he bought brand new here in 1974. Look at it. 